In this video, we're going to take a look at solving an equation with multiple variables for one specific variable from what are present in that equation. And uh, you might wonder, well, why on earth would we do this? Uh, there's a number of reasons why this could be helpful to us. One, sometimes if we solve for a particular variable or it's a part of making an equation look a certain way, getting it into a certain form, like slope-intercept form, for example. You might solve for y, um, and then that will allow us to pick out some things which will help us to graph it or to know something more about that equation. Another reason we might solve for a particular variable is maybe we're entering a formula into a spreadsheet, for example and we know a certain thing and we want to come out with another thing, well, there we might want to solve it for a particular variable that the equation isn't already solved for. So, it's useful in many different ways. So let's take a look at how we would do this. First of all, anytime we're asked to solve an equation, the goal is the same, to get that variable by itself. So we do whatever we need to, to get that variable by itself. Those things will include opposites to clear out anything that's hanging out with that variable. So, let's dig into an example here, this first one. So it says x equals 5y, we want to solve that equation for y. Okay, so what that's telling us is we've got to get the y by itself. Well, let's focus in then on the side of the equation with the y. And if you want, you could draw a line through here to separate the two sides, but we're going to focus in right here because that's where the y is. All right, what's going on between the 5 and the y? What operation is that? Well, when they're written next to each other, we know that's multiplication, so we do the opposite to get rid of it. So we're going to divide by 5. And if we do something on one side of the equation, remember, we have to do it on the other side as well. So here we go. Divide that side by 5 as well. All right, then. This is where it's a little bit different from maybe solving some of the equations that you may have done before. Typically, it's not going to simplify. We're just going to have kind of a gob of stuff that moves around. And that's okay. In some ways, it almost makes it easier because we don't have to figure out an actual number. We just take everything that's there. So in this case, we have the x divided by 5. We can't simplify that, so it just is what it is. x over 5 is equal to what's left over here? y. Okay. So now we've solved that equation for y. Let's take a look at this one right here. Um, and in this case, we're asked to solve for j. Okay, so process is the same. Find the J. Well, here it is right there. Yikes, we got H's and K's and all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, same kind of thing as we would have done if there's just a bunch of numbers there. We work our way in toward that variable, so we've got H times J, and then we've got a plus K over here. We do reverse order of operations, so we've got to get rid of the plus K first. How do we get rid of a plus K? Well, the opposite of plus K is minus K, so I'm going to subtract K, and again, remember, got to do it on both sides. If I'm going to do it on one side, got to do it on the other side, so minus K over here as well, then bring it down. And again, typically it's not going to simplify a lot, so we just take what it is, 6 minus k, all right? Well, what's left here then? Well, the k's are gone. We've still got an h and a j. So 6 minus k equals hj, all right? Now, got to get rid of the times h. How do I get rid of multiplication? Divide. So I'm going to divide by h, and on this side, I'm going to divide by h. And i got to divide the whole thing by h, because we divide or we do the same thing on both sides. This whole side is divided by h, and this whole side is divided by h. So make sure you put the whole thing over h. Okay, so be careful with that. Then let's rewrite it. Again, it's just going to be kind of a gob of stuff here. We've got 6 minus k, and then divided by h. That's equal to, well, what do we have over here? The h's cancel out, and we just have j. So j is equal to 6 minus k over h. 
there it is. That's all we can do. Sometimes people get a little uncomfortable with that, but that's it. That's all we can do. All right, let's look at this one. Now, we're asked to solve this one for A. Hmm. The A is stuck up here on top, and it's A plus 3 divided by B. Well, in this case, when we use the fraction bar like that, that stuff is stuck up there until we deal with this divided by B piece. So I got to free the A. So in this case, what I'm going to do is multiply by B first because that A plus 3 is stuck up there. So we got to get rid of the divide by B. We do that by multiplying by B on both sides. So multiply by B. Then that's gone because it was times B divided by B just left with a plus 3 then over here we have b times c or c times b either way you want to write it I'll typically write them in alphabetical order then we gotta get the a by itself well what's left with it plus 3 how do we get rid of it do the opposite minus 3 minus 3 bring it down we've got a by itself perfect that's what we were looking for solving for a and that's equal to now here this BC is one term, and then we're subtracting 3. So we're going to write it like this, BC minus 3. Okay? So it's B times C minus 3. That's our A. All right, finally, this last one here. Let's take a look at that one. In this case, we've got um, R divided by S, and that's equal to T minus 9. We're trying to solve for R. Okay, there's the R. Let's see what's with it. It's being divided by S. Okay, opposite of division, multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by S and over here. Okay, again, similar to what happened here where we had to divide the whole thing by H, here we have to multiply the whole thing by S. Okay, how do we show that we're multiplying all of this by S? Well, we do it with parentheses like that. So we're going to multiply that by S. What's left over here? Just the R. That's equal to. Now, a couple ways we could write this. We can put the S on the outside of the parentheses and then T minus 9 like that. Or we could distribute that S through depending on the situation. You may want to do that or you may not. Let's just look at what that would look like. Distribute it through. Remember, S times T. So that would be st, and then s times negative 9 would be minus 9s. Okay? So there we're solved for r. All right, solving for a variable. Very similar to the skills that you've used to solve other equations. It's just that we come up with answers that aren't like x equals 5. We might have other variables hanging out there and some operations, and it's just kind of a gob of stuff, but that's okay. Our goal is to get that variable by itself. We do that by doing the opposites. Look out for things like this where we have to divide the whole thing. So we're not just dividing one number here. We're dividing this whole thing by H. Or, like in this case, where we're multiplying by S, it's not just S times T or S times that minus 9. It's S times T minus 9, that whole thing. We'd have to multiply it by each piece or distribute that through. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.